Welcome to all of you from your centers. I give my regards to all the monks and to all the novices in Mahabodhi Center in Bangalore and to all the laity gathered here. This Friday, we learn about Dhamma on the subject of learning and training. The Buddha's disciple, who was the foremost of all the monks in his eagerness and interest in learning and training, was Venerable Rahula Tera. The child Rahula was a son of Prince Siddhartha and Princess Yashodara, also named Princess Bimba. Rahula was the grandson of King Sudodana of Kapilavastu. He was born on the same day that his father renounced his royal wealth to ordain as an ascetic. So Rahula grew up never seeing his father at all. After the Buddha had attained enlightenment, he came back to teach his Sakyan relatives at Kapilavastu, staying in Nikodarama the monastery that his relatives had together offered. The next morning, the Buddha did his morning duties going for alms round in the city of Kapilavastu and taught Dhamma to his father, King Sutotana, on the side of the road. And his father attained to becoming a Sotopanna, a stream enterer. On the second day, the Buddha came and received alms again as usual and he taught the Dhamma to his father and to Queen Maha Pajapati Gautami. Upon completion of the Dhamma talk, his father attained to Sakadagami, once returner, and Queen Maha Pajapati Gautami attained to the fruit of Sotapanna. Here, one may notice quite clearly that even after the Buddha had received arms in the palace for six days in a row, but Princess Pimpa, the mother of Rahula, didn't take young Rahula to see the Buddha at all. This wasn't like other people. But on the seventh day, standing, looking at the city of Kapilavastu, Princess Pimpa Tewi dressed up Rahula with fine ornaments and clothing and told him, Beloved child, that ascetic of golden complexion with features like the Brahma God surrounded by a great number of monks, he is your father and he has great treasures. From the day of his renunciation, we haven't seen any of it. Go up to him and ask for your rightful inheritance because you are the future monarch. Rahula heard this and went to go see the Buddha following what his mother had said and upon seeing the Buddha there arose a great love for his father. He had great joy and admiration gazing at the Buddha and being around him was pleasant and refreshing. The features of the Buddha was so incomparably bright and radiant and Rahula ended up talking about other things and didn't ask for the wealth of King Suddhodana. After the Buddha had gone for alms and gave the Anumotana and blessings, he went back to Nikodarama and Rahula followed him back there as well. No one could persuade him otherwise. When it was time, Rahula asked the Buddha for his wealth that he should rightly receive. Here the Buddha heard this and considered that Rahula wanted the wealth of his father, but this worldly wealth would be something that would make him keep going in the round of birth and death called Vata, and this the Buddha couldn't find even the slightest value in this type of wealth. So the Buddha would give Rahula the most noble and excellent wealth, and this would make him a true relative on the transcendental level and then Rahula would follow in the lineage of the Buddha. When King Sutotana found out that Rahula had ordained as a Samanera novice, he was very saddened and distressed. Although he was a Sakadagami, he still could not get past his sorrow. This is because he had high hopes that after Prince Siddhartha had gone to ordain, that Prince Nanda could later inherit the throne one day and this had been broken after the Buddha had taken Prince Nanda to ordain. 
yet he still had hopes left that Rahula could inherit the royal throne. But the Buddha took Rahula to ordain as well, so there was no one left to inherit the royal throne. He thought that if it continued like this, then there would be no children left in the Sakyan lineage because they would all be taken to ordain. He thought that this sadness would probably arise in the fathers of other lineages too. Because of this reason, he went to the Buddha at Nikodarama and asked the Buddha to give the allowance that, from this day onwards, if there is a child that wishes to ordain in the Buddha Sasana, if his mother and father have not given their permission, may he not be allowed to ordain. The Buddha gave his approval according to the wishes of his father, King Suttodana. He took his leave, and then the Buddha, shortly after having given this allowance, took Venerable Nanda, Samanera Rahula, and the Sangha to depart to go to the city of Rajagaha. Now we look at when Rahula ordained as a Samanera. Venerable Sariputta, the right-hand chief disciple of the Buddha, was a preceptor to Rahula. One day, while Samanera Rahula was staying at the Mango Grove in Rajagaha city, the Buddha went there and gave the discourse called Rahula Wada Sutta. The Buddha taught him Vipassana, talking on the subject of the Ayatana, the sense bases of the eye, ear, nose, tongue, body and mind, and talking on the inner and outer sense bases. The Samanera Rahula sent his mind to the current of the Dhamma and attained to becoming an Arahant. He practiced and received the praise of being the foremost of all the monks in being eager to learn. When Samanera Rahula was 20 years old, he ordained as a bhikkhu, and he was very intent to learn the Dhamma Vinaya. Every day when he woke up, he would fill his palm full of sand and make the determination that today I will receive words of teachings from the Buddha, my preceptor and all the teachers equal to the amount of grain of sands in my hand. By this cause, he was praised by the Buddha as being foremost out of all the disciples in being eager in learning and training. He lived a reasonable lifespan and attained to Parinibbana in Pandugampa in the Tawatingsa heaven realm. Venerable Rahula did not live to an old age because he attained Parinibbana before the Buddha and before Venerable Sariputta and Venerable Mahamogalana, his teachers. So can we see that Venerable Rahula had made a lot of parami, spiritual perfections in uncountable lifetimes. He had made the determination in the past to be the foremost in being eager to learn and train. Upon coming to this life, his aspirations were realized through his spiritual determination. Therefore, we should not think that we are well educated enough. May you be intent and determined to set your mind to be interested in learning more skills and knowledges. This is also for the novices that have ordained in Mahabodhi Bangalore, India, and the many novices that have ordained for this period. These novices are well behaved and inspiring faith. So may you take Venerable Rahula as an example of how you should be, being intent and eager to study and learn. Even though you are a novice, be intent to study and train. Even when you leave being a Samanera, still be determined to study and learn the knowledges of the world and the Dhamma together. Keep building your Parami until ultimately you can meet with true happiness. You will gain success in your life when you find the real happiness of Buddhism. Whether you are a child or an adult, may you be intent to learn Dhamma until you gain true understanding. May you all grow in blessings.